Welcome to the SafeCode eLearning course, Basic Practices for Secure Development of Cloud Applications 101, Part 1 of 2. The goal of this course is to provide you with the basic practices and most essential information about secure development and deployment of cloud applications. At the end of the course, you will understand the idea of cloud-based applications, and you will also have learned the critical elements for developing and deploying a cloud application securely giving you a high-level overview of the topic. By understanding the responsibilities which need to be addressed for cloud-based applications security-wise, you will have the capabilities to ensure a secure cloud environment for your applications and mitigate cloud-related risks. We will also provide you with additional resources to extend and improve your cloud application knowledge. The primary audience for the course are software and system architects, as well as product and program managers. However, other parties involved in the software development process of cloud applications will benefit from it as well, as having an understanding of the threats that a cloud application might face is helpful from the very beginning of the development lifecycle. This course starts with a basic introduction to cloud-based applications and the cloud itself. It shows the purpose and benefits of using the cloud for deploying applications. After you have gained an understanding about cloud basics, we will discuss common threats and risks associated with cloud-based applications. We will give you a brief overview of how responsibilities are shared between the cloud customer and the provider in the area of security. To make the amount of content easy to digest, we have created a second part of this training that details those responsibilities further. First of all, let's discuss the characteristics of cloud computing in order to give you the necessary basics for understanding the rest of this class. To understand the main security concepts and considerations of cloud-based applications, we first need to talk about some cloud technologies to get a clear understanding and to discuss later on why we need specific security measures. First of all, let's start with the definition of a cloud according to the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Cloud computing is a model for enabling convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. This definition already contains the most important elements and characteristics of cloud computing, which we will explore further. Five characteristics exist which define cloud computing. On-demand self-service, that means that clouds shall provide the requested computing resources as needed without any human intervention. Furthermore, the cloud shall only provide exactly the needed resources, not more and not less. Ubiquitous network access. This means that the accessibility to the cloud service is provided from anywhere using any network available by using some sort of client. Resource pooling. The resources of the cloud are pooled to meet the demand of customers. Therefore, resources can be assigned, reassigned, allocated, and deallocated as required. The cloud consumer is not aware of this process and does not know the location of the computing resources. Nevertheless, it is possible to specify a location if the execution is needed in a specific country, city, or region. Rapid elasticity. A cloud shall provide an illusion of infinite computing resources to the users. Therefore, a cloud service should be easily capable of handling a sudden peak of traffic by expanding resources elastically. Afterwards, unneeded resources are reassigned to other applications. Measured service. This means that as a result, customers only pay for the resources they really used. Cloud computing is separated into three service models. Software as a service, SaaS. Platform as a service, PaaS and Infrastructure as a Service, IaaS. The SaaS model is being used, for example, when you work with mail providers or Office 365, where you get access to an entire Office application software suite in the cloud. There are only a few security concerns you have to consider, because your cloud service provider, CSP, is doing the rest. By PaaS, your CSP is providing you with a platform where you can deploy your applications. A good example here is the App Store concept. The platform runs on an infrastructure maintained by the CSP that provides security features and services for you. Consumers of IaaS get access to virtual computers, storage, and network infrastructure through their CSP, where they can run and deploy arbitrary software, services, and operating systems. When you use IaaS, there are lots of security questions you have to face because you need to install, monitor, and operate everything on your own. 
Depending on the cloud service model you choose, there may be a shared security responsibility between you and the CSP, which we will explore later throughout this training. Besides these three cloud service models, we also want to take a short look at the on-premise implementation, which is noteworthy from the security perspective. On-premise is the traditional way to host services and applications on your servers, which are located within your company's trust boundary. For the deployment of cloud systems, four different kinds of models exist, differing in where the hardware for deploying and running the cloud applications is located and by whom it is owned. Public cloud. The public cloud is where a cloud provider offers his computing resources to different companies. The organizations use the resources through the public internet on a pay-as-you-go model. The cloud provider ensures some sort of separation for resources used by different organizations. This is known as multi-tenancy and will be discussed later. Private cloud. In this concept, a cloud infrastructure is only owned by one company and maintained by the organization or a third party. All resources are behind a corporate firewall and belong only to the company. Community cloud. Several organizations combine their private clouds into a single big community cloud. This is reasonable if the companies share similar use cases, concerns, and requirements. This provides the members of the cloud with a reduction of cost due to less overhead and more available resources. Hybrid cloud. This is the combination of any mentioned cloud concept with a standardized or proprietary technology. Main advantages of cloud computing are agility, scalability, sustainability, reliability, and economies of scale. Additional cost reduction is an important part since customers only pay for what they need. With that, we just finished the basic concepts of cloud computing already. Now it is time to move on to the next chapter. There are many promises and advantages coming with cloud-based applications. Nonetheless, the risks associated with them should not be forgotten. The Cloud Security Alliance, short CSA, states that it is necessary to have the ability to understand the nature of security threats for cloud-based applications as a prerequisite for managing risks in cloud computing. Therefore, we will take a closer look at different threats for cloud-based applications in the next section. The threat report created by the CSA reflects the current consensus among cloud and application security experts about the most significant threats to the security of cloud-based applications. The following five threats that we selected are what we deem to be the most critical and specific threats to cloud-based applications and will be discussed further on the following slides. Firstly, data breaches. Secondly, data leakage and data loss. Thirdly, insecure interfaces and APIs. Fourthly, denial of service. Finally, insufficient design and planning. We will take a closer look at the nature of each of those threats right away. Data breaches always occur when an attacker is capable to collect data he is not supposed to have access to. One of the most well-known attacks is SQL injection, which allows an attacker to manipulate SQL queries to extract any data from the database underlying an application. SQL injections are already rather dangerous against web applications, but inside a multi-tenant cloud environment, it is even worse. When several cloud applications share a single database for data storage, a vulnerability in a single application may potentially expose the data of all applications to an attacker. So even if your cloud application is secure, it is possible to have your data leaked because of a vulnerability in another application on the same cloud provider. This may be an issue, for instance, in a SaaS context. Even in classic non-cloud computing, the permanent loss of data may be either bad or even devastating for a company. Frankly, it doesn't matter if the lost data is customer records or intellectual property. Losing a big amount of data always leads to a large negative impact. Of course, cloud stored data can be lost as well. Not only malicious attacks can lead to loss of data. There may be failures or physical catastrophes like fires, floods, or earthquakes, which could lead to the destruction of your cloud's provider hardware and therefore to data loss. As a consequence, your cloud provider needs to take adequate measures to back up data. Nevertheless, the responsibility for data loss is not solely the provider's responsibility. If a cloud customer encrypts his data before uploading it to the cloud and loses the key, the data will be lost as well. When it comes to handling and protection of data, it may be shared responsibility between the data owner and the cloud provider. We will get back to that point later on. 
In cloud computing, providers expose a set of APIs to their customers to manage and interact with the cloud service. Those APIs normally offer a wide range of functionality for management operations, monitoring, or orchestration. Security for such an API depends on the correct design of the API and proper usage by customers. In this context, proper usage can be expressed as following the provider's instructions and best practices for the API. If the authentication and access control of the APIs is not implemented or done correctly, it is possible for attackers to abuse the APIs for their own purpose. Sometimes organizations or third parties use the basic APIs of a cloud service to implement their own services on top, which offer the customer a more complex service. These new services can be viewed as a new API layer which needs to be secured as well as the underlying base layer. A denial of service or short DOS attack aims to deny the customers of a cloud service to access their applications or data. This is achieved by forcing the victim, in this case a cloud provider or service, to consume inordinate amounts of system resources like memory, disk space, or network capacity. If the attacker achieves this goal, it normally results in a system slowdown, where users and customers are not able to use the service properly anymore. Denial of service attacks can also be executed from several attackers or attack sources at once, which is known as a distributed denial of service, DDoS attack. Nevertheless, denial of service attacks can also be executed by identifying a vulnerability inside a web server, database, or other cloud resource. If such a vulnerability exists, an attacker may be able to take out the system by using an extremely small payload in his attack, which would result in a denial of service as well. If you think about countering DOS threats against your cloud applications, include your CSP in the discussion. Several CSPs may offer you DOS mitigations as a transparent service as part of their network architecture already. On the foregoing slides, we heard already about several technical difficulties when it comes to securing cloud services. But there are also some weak organizational or procedural points. Cloud providers sell their services for cost-reducing purposes and to improve operational efficiency and sometimes even for security purposes. These are common reasons for organizations to switch to cloud environments. Nevertheless, many companies jump onto cloud computing without understanding the full context of such a step. Without a sufficient understanding of the cloud service environment, an organization may run into several pitfalls. Applications can, for instance, be pushed into the cloud which are not suitable or capable for cloud service. Sometimes, even information about internal cryptography, network monitoring, or incident response is pushed into the cloud. Pushing such information into the cloud may not always be desirable. Furthermore, unknown operational or architectural issues arise when developers, designers, or architects are not familiar with cloud development. Therefore, before moving to a cloud environment, it is necessary for an organization to understand all risks associated with using cloud services and to evaluate which application and data is suitable for bringing it into the cloud. Also, applications which used to run in an enterprise environment can't always simply be moved from the enterprise environment to a SaaS or PaaS provider. It may be necessary to redesign core elements of services pushed into the cloud. Think, for example, about security functions with respect to key management. After having discussed the main threats to cloud applications, it should become clear that the single specific application from classic IT is no longer the only attack surface. When an application is deployed into the cloud, the cloud service provider and every other application in the same environment has to be taken into account as well when looking at the attack surface. Therefore, even if the application itself is invulnerable, the cloud provider or any other application may be. To ensure that the data of an application is secured and available, it is necessary to secure not only the application, but also the cloud environment. On the other hand, if an application is vulnerable against any kind of attack, every other cloud application in the same cloud environment may be at risk as well. Depending on the chosen service model, the responsibilities vary between the cloud provider and the cloud customers. When we discussed the threats of cloud-based applications, we noted already at one point that the security of cloud-based applications is a shared responsibility between provider and data owner. 
All the cloud models that we have discussed have an influence on how the security responsibilities are shared between CSP and customers in the area of security. Many organizations mistakenly assume that they do not need to think about security after moving into the cloud, but this is a common misconception. This diagram shows who is responsible for which security topic on which cloud model. Now, let's go step-by-step step through the diagram to dive into the details. On the top row, you see the deployment models that we defined and discussed before, namely on-premise, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. On the leftmost column, we have depicted the different responsibilities for a cloud environment, starting with data classification and accountability and going down to physical security. To grasp this better, remember that with cloud, three parties are typically involved, customer, CSP, and potentially also application development. Depending on your position among those three, the view on responsibilities might differ. To summarize, this slide presents an overview of the six essential security responsibilities for cloud computing. With that, we are nearly at the end of the first part of the training. The second part of this training will explore the shared security responsibilities more deeply. Feel free to pause the training if you would like to study this overview diagram longer. As the topic of bringing applications into the cloud securely is a rather complex one, we hope you got an initial idea throughout this training what the characteristics of cloud computing are and which threats you should consider when relying on cloud environments. Remember, there are some pitfalls that you should consider if you want to move your environment into the cloud. Part of it lies within the responsibility between you and the CSP. Always take your time to plan a migration of a service into the cloud before executing it. Here we list a few links and resources that we have used for creating this training for you that you might want to explore to increase your understanding of cloud computing, its applications, and how to use them securely. Remember that there is a second part of this training for you to explore as well. Thank you for taking this safe code training course.